Guys, uh, my H2 is a little bit of a disaster. Um, let me back this out a little bit by saying that uh, it's not a complete disaster. It's not like this bike is broken, it's not gonna run or whatever, but you know, buying a seven-year-old project bike that someone uses a mile event bike, while it was very cool, um, and I did save a bunch of money on the mods I would have normally done, it has not been without its issues. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on with the H2, why it may be a little bit too much, and what I'm gonna do about it. Let's get into it. So let's start off with the good about the bike, right? So I bought the bike for $25,000. Uh, that, if you know anything about H2s, is a great deal for an H2, especially one with as much modification and uh, readily available as it was. Um, this is a bike that if you try to go to the Kawasaki dealership and buy, uh, you will not be able to simply just buy an H2. Uh, it's kind of like that meme, one does not simply buy an H2. You have to actually talk to Kawasaki corporate or your dealership, they'll schedule you a build and then it takes about six to eight months to even get one. Uh, and you're gonna pay probably over $30,000 to get an H2. So for me, getting it instantly and getting a five grand off that normal price that would have probably cost uh, was a great thing. Now, um, being that it was a used motorcycle, used bikes, no matter what, no matter how clean they are, no matter how well the previous owner maintained them, they will always have corks and issues, and especially one that's been modified as extensively as this one and that has a complete engine rebuild. So let's talk about some of the not so great things about my H2. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that it runs E85. So E85 is a different fuel source that people use to make higher levels of power when you have a forced induction motorcycle. Now, given that this motorcycle is a force induction motorcycle and is designed to make a ton of horsepower, it's gotten to the point where with E85, it makes a whole lot of power. But where I live, E85 is not readily available. You can't exactly go out and find E85 anywhere. There's, I think, only three or four pumps in Austin that has E85. Uh, coupled with the fact that because it runs that fuel source, the fuel range is ridiculously bad on this motorcycle. So the two times that I've ridden this bike, it's left me stranded. Um, I'm going to talk about the first one, or about the fuel, and then the second one later on in the video. First time it left me stranded was uh, with gas. So I took it out on that first ride that you guys saw. Um, as you saw, the fuel pump was starting to have a little bit of weirdness with it. And I maybe did 45 miles on that ride. I got on the highway a little bit, I did a little bit of uh, pulls here and there, and the bike literally completely ran out of juice. I had a full tank when I did this. Uh, so the fact that the bike only runs about 45 to 50 miles having some fun is not very good. Uh, I spoke with the previous owner about it and he said that he would get about 60 to 70 miles to a tank. So th guys, that is really bad. <laughs> um, that is not quite enough range for my liking and it just, you know, the gas light doesn't work on it anymore either. And so I had no idea that I was running even close to out of fuel on this thing because it's running a different fuel pump and the gas tank is different. There's some, something's going on with it where the gas light doesn't work anymore. Suffice it to say. So it left me stranded like that. So the remedy for that is going to be converting it back to pump gas. Um, I know that some of you in the comments are going to say, sacrilege, you're reducing the power, blah, blah, blah. Guys, it makes plenty of horsepower. Even bone stock in H2 makes plenty of horsepower. Um, I think that converting this bike back to pump gas is gonna be the right thing to do. Uh, I think sometime early in 2023, I'm gonna get this bike out to the previous builder, Booms Tune, I think in Houston. Um, I've already spoken with them over the phone, which is great. They're good guys. They helped me sort out a different issue on this bike, so that was awesome. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna get it back there, tune it back to pump gas, um, and kind of go from there for the fuel. The second time it left me stranded was when the battery completely fried itself. So. I went out the first time I took this motorcycle out, I went out, I was doing a normal ride with it, and I ended up on a back street. And with this motorcycle, because it's on a back street, and because the gears are so outrageously long, um, you end up cruising at about 2,000, 2,500 RPM. Normally, not a problem on a motorcycle, shouldn't be an issue. However, this motorcycle, because it's running so many different accessories and so much bigger fuel pump and all this sort of thing, I was told by the previous builder that if you keep it under 4,500 RPMs with a battery that doesn't have sufficient cold cranking amps, you will cook the battery. And that's exactly what happened to me. I was lucky that I pulled into a gas station to refuel it because I was already running low on gas. 
motorcycle. And this motorcycle simply died. Um, it would not even key on anymore. And so I was like, oh my God, did it like blow a fuse or something? So I'm at this gas station, I'm popping the seat off, I'm checking the fuses, all the fuses are good. I'm like, okay, what the hell's going on here? And yeah, this bike now, I've ordered a new battery for it with a 770 cold cranking amp. It's a P10S battery. Um, and it's on back order because it's like a special battery or whatever. And you know, it's funny because I have a Turbo Hayabusa. I know how these things go. These, these super high, crazy modified motorcycles. You know, it's like one thing after another with them. Um, and I'm to the point now where I, I wanted something super turnkey and buying a highly modified H2 maybe was not the most turnkey thing that I thought it would be. Um, but I really wanted the, the Apex Predator Echelon topping uh, high horsepower motorcycle. And I, I got one, but you know, I'm realizing that with these bikes, you become a bit of like a, a caretaker for an old person, right? That's how I feel about my, my Hayabusa, which is like, I feel like it's this old cantankerous uncle that I have to like show up and kind of, you know, check his bedpan and make sure he's okay and, and doing all that good stuff with them. Uh, whereas the H2 is is maybe like my, my cocaine, bath salt consuming, meth addict brother-in-law that I need to go and check on or something like that. They're, they're both cantankerous in their own ways. Um, so that kind of leads me to my next point of like, do I want to keep this bike? Do I want to keep going down this path? And I think I do. I want to do the 200 mile per hour thing. I want to go to a mile event. I want to use and enjoy this motorcycle. But I got to be totally honest with you guys. It's a lot of bike. Um, it is so much bike. And I'm at the point with my riding career where I don't even really like riding on the street all that much anymore. And the track time that I do get, I massively prefer a actual setup track bike like my Daytona or like the Ninja 400 that we bought for endurance racing. I prefer track ready motorcycles that can actually do corners. I'm not really big on drag racing. I don't go out to mile events that often. Um, and so it's kind of like, what are we doing with this bike, you know? And I think the thing we're doing with it is showing you guys how there is a limit to all this. Um, it is really cool to post up dyno figures and brag about massive horsepower numbers, but you know, I'm gonna be totally honest and we might have to bleep all this section out, I don't know yet, but it's like having an 18 inch long. It's great to brag about, functionally useless, right? It's a bit of a silly thing to have. And you can choose to have an H2, you don't choose to have an 18 inch long. You know, you can be blessed or cursed with that, either way you wanna look at it. Um, so I'm, I'm, interested in the journey we're going down with this motorcycle. It has been very peculiar to own it so far. And I think that we need to dial it in a little bit more, take it back to pump gas, put the bigger battery in it, get with the builder, figure out everything that's been done to it. And then I think from there, we'll have a pretty good functional motorcycle that we can use turnkey. Um, I will be totally honest with you guys, and if you stuck around to the end of the video, um, I, I'm, I'm gonna bless you with a little bit of yammy insider information. Um, I, you know, I do kind of wish it was just a ZH2. I'm gonna be totally honest. It would be more comfortable, it would be more turnkey. The one we had with the Brock setup and the, and the flash and everything was ludicrously fast and it would rip wheelies everywhere. It was so much fun to ride and I didn't have to worry about the gas, I didn't have to worry about the riding position, I didn't have to worry about the battery cooking itself. Yeah, could it do 220 miles per hour? No, but how often are you really doing 220 miles per hour? Basically like 0.000001% of the time that you're owning the thing. And yeah, I, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised guys if I own this thing for about a year, make a bunch of fun videos with it and enjoy it. And then, I don't know, I might get like a supercharged VMAX or get a ZH2 again or something that complements the stable a little bit better. Um, but the H2 has been, I mean, it's world endingly fast. I don't think I'm ever gonna ride a motorcycle that's faster than it. So I'm still really excited to ride it and enjoy it and show you guys the process. But I love being honest with you guys. I wanna show you guys that this is not all sunshine and rainbows when you buy an H2, um, especially one as modified as this one. But if y'all have H2 knowledge and lore, let me know in the comments down below. I hope you've enjoyed this insider back the scenes look on the H2. Uh, let me know what you think about this video down below and uh, catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Amy Noob!